y'all i'm jasmine and welcome back to my youtube channel so in today's video i'm going to tell you guys a recap of my second year in pharmacy school i can't believe i'm almost going into my third year so if you guys are interested in learning about all about my second year things i've learned things i wish i would have known keep watching also make sure you guys like comment and subscribe to get a dose of jasmine and learn more about me my lifestyle and pharmacy thanks for tuning in y'all okay so just being honest i feel like this year has been a year of growth for me in pharmacy school. I feel like my first year, I was really just trying to tackle how exactly to navigate the world of pharmacy. But second year, I understood how to study for exams, what to expect on exams, uh, basically how to maneuver throughout the academic space. So the second year is really about professionalism and trying to boss up, trying to be a boss. So second year, I think the most important thing that I learned was pharmacy is not just about performing well in the classroom, but it's about who you know, um, what connections you can make, discovering what you really like in the world of pharmacy and using the tools around you to navigate and figure out exactly what kind of professional you want to be. So this year, um, the first thing I did was um, my best friend in pharmacy school, Kendrick and I, we got a headshot or a professional picture. Um, and this may seem really trivial, but it's really important. Number one, for LinkedIn. Number two, if anybody ever needs to use a picture of you in a professional space, you have that headshot. Um, and it can be really inexpensive. So number one, I got a headshot. Number two, you need to make sure that you have business cards that are up to date and appropriate to use for any type of professional environment. Um, this year I did go to a conference and that was really, really helpful for me to have business cards. Um, I also think that it's really important for you to have a CV, a Vita, or a resume um, because during my second year or the summer after my second year, you are expected to do an internship. And to do this internship, you have to apply. It's really competitive like it's other people from different pharmacy schools. So what's going to make you stand out from other ER competition or from other pharmacy students? So a headshot, um, the business cards, and also making sure your CV is up to par. So in order to make sure that my CV was where I needed it to be, I went to career services at school. Um, so at my school, career services is free. They help you with anything that you need professionally. So not only did I get a CV um, or I got them to edit my CV, but I also got them to look at my personal statement, um, my letters of intent, my cover letter. So whenever I submitted an application, I knew that it was gonna be top notch. So <laughs> make sure that you use all your resources to be the best professional possible because pharmacy, is a bit more than just how you perform in a classroom. So I know some of you guys may be wondering what classes I have to take. <laughs> you know, I haven't really talked about academics that much, but during pharmacy school, um, of course, your second year or in my program, in our curriculum, the second year is mostly focused on pharmacotherapy, of course. So choosing medication regimens based on a patient profile or based on a patient's specific disease state. Um, but we also took pharmacology the first semester of my second year. And honestly, I really like pharmacology this year. Last year, I had no idea how to study for pharmacology. But this year, because I did focus more on um, ADME or absorption, distribution, metabolism, elimination, I like thrived in pharmacology. So I really like pharmacology. Um, we also had U.S. healthcare. So I had no idea that I would like U.S. healthcare. I had no idea that I would like policy or I would like the things that impact how our healthcare system works in the United States. But I really, really like U.S. healthcare. <laughs> and because I like the class, I was a bit more um, involved. I went to talk to the professor more. I talked to the TA more. Um, I even talked to one of my preceptors about it and he was like, hey, you seem like you may really be interested in healthcare policy. So U.S. Healthcare, literally one of my favorite courses in pharmacy school. And it led to me getting an internship, but I'll talk about my internship later. Um, so U.S. Healthcare, we also took patient care experience and patient care lab. And that's essentially where you learn tools to work more effectively with patients to achieve an overall outcome or a better outcome for their health goals. So those were the classes I took first semester and second semester. So the second semester or second year in my school, we have half of the semester you're in the classroom and the other half of the semester you're in the field learning about whatever you want to do in pharmacy. Um, so the first half of the semester for me, I actually did rotations in a hospital and this was my first ever experience in a hospital in a pharmacy space. So it was really interesting for me. I was really nervous, but it worked out. I had really good preceptors. They taught me a lot about pharmacy. I did a lot of vancomycin dosing. I did a lot of reviewing patient profiles and even just learning how to maneuver through electronic health records. So I learned a lot about the operations that go into pharmacy how patients actually get medications to their room when they're in a the hospital. So my immersion experience, I learned a 
so much <laughs> about pharmacy and what pharmacists can do in a hospital setting. It was really interesting for me. I'm not sure if it's the career path for me, but I definitely learned not a lot and I have a lot of respect for for I have a lot of respect for a hospital pharmacists. <laughs> so the second half of my second year of pharmacy school or the second semester of pharmacy school, um, I had, of course, pharmacotherapy. Um, I also had leadership and professional development. I've already talked about this, but it was really helpful for me to learn more about leadership. Um, and that's about it. So I'm also doing a research project. So that's been helpful. Um, but in terms of pharmacotherapy, the second semester of my second year, it picked up. <laughs> it was a lot. So um, they really took the training wheels off. It's kind of full force. Like this is what the patient case is and now you figure it out on your own. So that was really interesting. Um, every week we were assigned different disease states. So the weekend before I would have to read all this information and then hopefully <laughs> remember it when school came back around because we had a quiz on the disease state and the patient case. So pharmacotherapy really, really picked up this year, but I do think that I was well equipped to handle it. So <laughs> pharmacy school is not easy, but I do feel like the curriculum is set up for you to grow over time. And I can definitely see my growth as a student pharmacist after this past year. So beyond being professional in pharmacy or being a professional, a young professional, I think it's really important to know this year I learned about leadership. So in the past, I've had some leadership opportunities in undergrad, but in pharmacy school, I was introduced to the idea of leadership and how to be a good leader and not just to lead people with what you think is best. So during my immersion experience or my rotation, I actually shadowed um, in pharmacy administration and I learned a ton about leadership. I had to read some articles about leadership and what exactly it means to not only get people to want to follow you, but to portray a vision that people can see themselves fulfilling because it fulfills them as well as fulfilling the purpose that you have for the organization. So I definitely feel like this year, beyond professionalism, learning about leadership, how to be a good leader, tools that leaders can use, is really, really important, especially if you're gonna lead an organization. So my second year of pharmacy school, I was president elect uh, for, I was president-elect of SNAPA, <laughs> and SNAPA is the Student National Pharmaceutical Association, and essentially the purpose of SNAPA is to use pharmacy to serve underserved populations. And I was really nervous about assuming the role of president in SNAPA, but I knew that I was passionate about the cause. But what I learned um, about leadership is it's not enough for you to just care about what you're working with. That's the first step. The next step is to create a vision for your organization and then make sure that vision is fulfilled by the leadership team as well as your general body members. But you have to make people buy into that vision. You have to make them see that this is really important and the work that you're doing can really impact lives. So I definitely think that professionalism and leadership has transformed me as a student pharmacist and aided in my evolution <laughs> into Jasmine the PharmD. Okay, so on to my internship. So I'm currently an intern with a company in my area um, and it's a really, really interesting company and I learned about it in my US healthcare course. So what I also learned this year is if you find something interesting, talk to the professor about it, research it more, look more into it. So when we were in class one day, my professor mentioned this company and the work that they're doing to improve health outcomes in the pharmacy space um, and essentially providing data to improve health outcomes or to provide more value-based care um, in pharmacy practice. So I was like, wow, this is really cool. So I Googled the company and guess what? They had an application open for an intern. I submitted the application. I looked it up on LinkedIn, I looked up what the company was doing, and I really, really liked it. And ultimately, I got an internship. So what I also learned is it's really difficult to get internships sometimes just because there are, there are a lot of pharmacy students, um, there is a lot of competition. So just being fully transparent, I applied for a ton of internships, like a lot. And with this internship, this is the only one that followed through. So this is the only one that I actually got. So this is the only one I interviewed for. This is the only one I got the position for. So that was really disheartening for me. Like, I think I'm a good student. My GPA is pretty good. I'm involved. I have leadership, um, I have a leadership role. And to think that <laughs> I didn't get a lot of callbacks or a lot of interviews, it was pretty disheartening. But I did learn that whatever opportunity is meant for you is going to be. So even though, even though I only got one internship um, offer, 
I'm really thankful because this internship has been amazing for me and it's let me see that this could potentially be my, the career that I want to pursue post-graduation. So I'm really, really, really loving my internship. Um, I'm learning a lot, not only about the company, not only about value-based care, not only about the way that pharmacy works and the different, I guess, organizations that go into someone getting their prescription filled at a local pharmacy, but I'm learning so much about communications and how to convey a message to consumers or how to convey a message to patients or to different companies about the work that you're doing and why it's so important. So my internship has been awesome. So number one, talk to your professors if you think that something is cool in class. Number two, follow up on things that you learn in class. Um, number three, don't be afraid to use LinkedIn. Make sure your LinkedIn profile is really good. Um, and I think that's about it. So internship is going great. <laughs> Okay, so I haven't yet addressed the elephant in the room, but COVID-19 or coronavirus literally interrupted the second half of my second year of pharmacy school. And I honestly think that the school maneuvered well. We still had classes online. We still had exams. We still had group work. We still had patient cases. So I do think that COVID-19 interrupted some things, but the semester continued on. So I'm really hopeful that the semester will go well next year as well. So. Coronavirus was a huge thing this year, but academically, I still performed well. Um, it was a little bit more stressful because of everything that was happening in the world, the hysteria around COVID-19, the deaths and the way that it impacted people's lives. But I do think that the semester continued to go smoothly academically. So I also think that I would be doing a disservice if I didn't mention the fact that I am a minority or I am a black woman in a pharmacy program and a vast majority of pharmacy programs are not, um, <laughs> there aren't a lot of minority students. So I'm just being honest. Um, as a minority woman in pharmacy school, I feel like this year has been a lot better. So my first year I was feeling very weird. I had imposter syndrome. I was like, ooh, I don't know if I belong here. But this year it was a lot better. Like I actually started becoming friends with some of my classmates. Um, people are really nice, but I do have to say that I have experienced a lot of microaggressions in pharmacy school. And if you don't know, microaggression is basically where someone says something that on the surface doesn't appear to be offensive, but when you think about it or, or when you look into it, it actually is pretty offensive and it kind of makes you feel bad, even if they didn't say anything that was really, really bad. So I did notice this year that, especially in group work. So if I said an answer, people would second guess it. But if my colleague said the exact same thing in a different manner, people would automatically receive it. So I did kind of struggle with microaggressions a bit, but I don't think that it's something that I couldn't overcome. I mean, it's just the reality of the way that people are socialized to believe things about different races. So it's not really my fault that people have these, I guess, assumptions about black people, but that is something that I had to deal with and I'm learning to maneuver now more um, being a black woman in a program where it's mostly white, to be honest, um, it can be disheartening sometimes because your classmates don't necessarily understand, especially right now with the political climate. Um, it could be a lot. So I did have to learn more about feeling whole within myself, feeling complete within myself and realizing that not everybody is going to understand what's going on with your community. Not everybody's gonna care about what's going on in your community because in reality, it takes a really, really amazing person to be empathetic and fully understand and be aware about what's happening outside of their own community. So that is something I had to deal with. But again, you just kind of have to roll with the punches and keep pushing because you're in this program. Um, you have loans, scholarships, whatever, however you're paying for school. A lot of people um, look up to you while you're in school. And ultimately, you have to reach your goal of graduating. So you can't let things like that stop you. So I did experience that, but it's life. <laughs> okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about is my mental health. Um, I know that my first year of pharmacy school, I really struggled with anxiety, um, imposter syndrome. So actually this year, I went to therapy about my anxiety and I feel much better about it. Um, I have some mechanisms to cope with being anxious because pharmacy school is difficult. And I always try to be superwoman <laughs> in my academic studies. So I did learn a lot about my anxiety by going to therapy. And I also have a new life coach, I guess you could say. So I'm going to leave her information in the description box below, but she has been absolutely amazing. Her name is Dr. Johnson. She is a PharmD as well. And she's been really helping me navigate not only 
pharmacy, but also uh, my personal life and how that is involved in pharmacy. So not only my mental health, but also my physical health, um, my spiritual health, because that's really important to me. But yeah, having going to therapy and having this new life coach to help me with things outside of my professional life is really, really helpful because what I have noticed in pharmacy is a lot of people put their life on the back burner to pursue this career. So I am one of those people. <laughs> Sometimes I do sacrifice a lot to perform well in the classroom and also perform well in extracurricular activities. But it's really important to note, and my life coach has kind of helped me with this, it's really important to note that all parts of your life have to be whole in order for you to feel fulfilled. So you can be fulfilled professionally in your career, but what happens when you're at home at night? <laughs> what happens when you haven't exercised in three weeks? So life is about more than just excelling professionally or excelling academically. So I'm so thankful for not only going to therapy, but also talking to my life coach, Dr. Johnson, about all things pharmacy and all things life outside of pharmacy. So if you're interested, her services will be in my description box below. Um, let her know Jasmine sent you. If you guys have any questions about how she's helped me on my journey, just let me know. So thank you guys so much for watching my video today. I hope you guys learned something that you can use about my second year in pharmacy school. Um, it's been crazy. Life is crazy. School is crazy, but things are still moving. Things are still pushing. Um, but if you guys have any questions pharmacy related, leave them down below and please leave video requests down below. Um, just a quick disclaimer, I am moving. Yay. So I'm going to have a new backdrop, a new filming area. So let me know what you guys want to see in the future. Leave me some um, requests down below for videos, but if not, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to get a dose of Jasmine and learn more about me, my pharmacy, and lifestyle. Thanks for watching, y'all.